I love sex. Sex is fantastic. And when I was younger, particularly my college years, I used to have a lot of casual sex because at the time I thought that's what I wanted. Oh, I'm in college. This is the time to be crazy, to test everything out, to just go wild. I felt like I was sold this idea of what your crazy college sex life should look like. And at the time, I felt like it was empowering. Empowering is not the word that I would use to describe it now. In fact, I feel a lot differently about that time in my life now. And I've talked about this briefly in videos on my channel and as well on my podcast. And I've talked at length about how, you know, I really, I want to make a video about this, just totally focused on this topic. So here we finally are. Calling it the whole face of celibacy pipeline is maybe an over-exaggeration, but it gets at the heart of what I want to talk about in today's video, which is really the that I think we've become too casual about casual sex. So today I wanted to talk a little bit more about my own hoe phase, what I learned from it, what made me realize that it was not something that worked for me and how I feel about hookup culture in general and how it impacts young people. Now, I don't think that any of what I'm gonna say in today's video is controversial in the slightest, but to anybody that might misunderstand me, let me make myself totally fucking clear. I think that everyone should do whatever the fuck they want with their own bodies. I think that everyone's choices are personal and private. I think we should all have as much sex as we want with as many partners as we want. But please know that any criticisms that I talk about in today's video is not rooted in me believing that casual sex is bad. It is rooted in me believing that I think that we need to be more intentional about casual sex. And I think that we need to encourage young people to be more thoughtful and careful with their partners so that we can all have safe casual sex because I just don't think that that's what's being promoted. Before I dive in any deeper, I wanna introduce today's sponsor, which is very fitting, our friends over at Beducated. Beducated is an online course platform with audio, video, and written guides, all with the intention of enhancing your love and sex life. Beducated is a sex ed platform. It's a sex ed that you always wanted and never got. I'm a huge fan of Beducated. I've been working with them for almost two years now. And it's one of my favorite platforms to recommend to people, whether you are just sort of starting to dive into the world of sex, you've got a lot of questions that you're too embarrassed to ask, or you're someone that just likes to indulge in sex ed content because it makes you feel more comfortable. I seriously cannot recommend Beducated enough. <laughs> They've got a range of courses on their site that take a range of different approaches. So you've got some courses that cover sex from a more educational perspective, maybe courses that cover topics similarly to the ones that you might have taken in a sex ed course if you ever got a comprehensive sex ed course. But they also have a lot of courses over on Beducated that are totally unlike anything that you ever would have been taught in a sex ed classroom. For example, they've got entire courses on giving oral and not only are they gonna walk you through, teach you different techniques, but they're gonna show you how to do it so you get a visual representation as well as all these new tips and tricks to enhance your oral sex experience. And honestly, this is a perfect gift for any of your friends that are looking to connect more with their sensual side, with their sexual side and explore sex from the comfort of your own home. It's also a great last minute gift since you don't have to go out and get anything and you also don't have to wait for anything to come in the mail. It's just a subscription to the Beducated Library so that you or someone you love can check out these courses for the next year. If you use code MADDIE, you can get 40% off the yearly pass at Beducated. I cannot recommend Beducated enough to anybody who's interested in this type of content. I think it's amazing that we have resources like this on the internet that are a reliable source to answer everybody's sex questions in a very shame-free sort of way. Again, that's code MADDIE for 40% off the yearly pass at Beducated. And thank you again to Beducated for sponsoring today's video. When I was younger, I really bought into this idea of casual sex being empowering because I felt like I was taking something that women were often shamed for and saying, fuck you, fuck this. I'm going to do whatever I want with my own body. This is my choice. Fuck you for saying I can't or shouldn't do that. Body count and how a woman's worth deteriorated with every person that she slept with felt like that was a topic of conversation that was constantly surrounding me in high school and in college. And I would get really fired up about it as I'm sure a lot of us do. And I think it probably ignited other frustrations in me as well. I think it also included a sort of teenage frustration of growing into your body and having every single adult human have an issue with it. The amount of times that I was called down to the principal's office for the clothes that I was wearing when 
I wasn't wearing anything out of the ordinary. I would wear the same outfit as everybody else. And because I had a curvier body, I would get in trouble for wearing those clothes. Automatically sexualized, automatically a distraction to everybody. So keeping in mind that that's also a feeling that is very present at that point in time. So I think there were a lot of feelings happening at that time in my life that pushed me more towards rebelling, saying, fuck it, the world doesn't want me to do this, the world doesn't want me to embrace my sexuality, to have sex, to do whatever the fuck I want with my body, they want me to remain pure and innocent and whatever the fuck else, and I'm gonna say no. I'm not gonna do that and do whatever I want. And that to me, that was my thought process. And that was what felt empowering to me at the time. On top of that, some context, which I'm sure a lot of you guys know by now, cause this is the part that I talk about all the time, is that I never had like any attention in high school. No one ever had a crush on me. I did not have my first kiss in high school. I had my first kiss the summer going into college and all of my sexual experiences happened in college. And so I went from never having any attention as a young teenager growing up and then going to college in New York City and having a lot of attention. And I never wanted a hookup. I always wanted a relationship. I wanted someone to love me, but I was so naive and so relentlessly optimistic and trusting that I believed that these hookup situations that I would get myself into would someday evolve into a relationship. I feel like I got sucked into hookup culture sort of unknowingly and once I was there I almost had to convince myself that I liked it and that I wanted to be doing this because if I said no I actually don't want to do this that would have been me finding out that people didn't want to date me and they only wanted to fuck me and that was something that I don't know I could have mentally have dealt with at that point in time at that point in time I'm 18 years old I've been bullied for my body my entire life. No one's ever liked me. Here I am in New York. I'm finally getting attention. People finally want me, but they only want me sexually. And it makes me feel like shit, but I can't acknowledge that because then it, you know, it, I would fucking spiral, honestly. So I was convinced at that phase of my life that now I see it as I was lying to myself as a way of coping. But at the time, I really felt like I was the one choosing to have a hoe phase. I was the one that was choosing to engage in so much casual sex. I liked it, I felt good about it, and that this was in some way liberating or empowering to constantly indulge in my sexuality is what I would have said back then. You know, I'm a crazy college student. I'm just going absolutely crazy. I'm having the time of my life. I'm doing it for the plot, for the story, like whatever the fuck else I would have said at that point in time in my life. It made me feel like all of my discomfort, all of the boundaries that I pushed was for some higher purpose. It was for character development, it was for the story. And I think it just helped to convince me that this was a choice that I was making and not one that was being made for me. And in college, I even made a short film that centered around the topic of body count and this idea that men are treated very differently for the amount of sexual partners that they have than the women are. And I still agree with the general point that I was trying to make with the short, which is just that body count is fucking pointless and there's no reason that anybody should be treated differently because of it. But what I don't agree with that I feel like was a secondary part of the film that I talked about a lot at that time when I was making it was about how the main character was empowered by casual sex. In my head, it's like the original thoughts are the same. I still hold similar beliefs, but the conclusions that I'm drawing from those beliefs are different now. I think there are a lot of reasons why I don't find casual sex empowering anymore. I think the main thing that people would say is empowering about casual sex is really the choice, the act of choosing that this is what I'm gonna do with my body feels empowering. But if it is just rooted in the choice, then it's not really dependent on if it's casual or not. It's just choosing to have sex, choosing what to do with your body that is the empowering aspect of it. When we're talking about casual sex specifically, it is a little different than that. I mean, in my situation, I felt like at the time, I was convinced that that was a choice I was making for myself. But I was growing up in a patriarchal society that made me believe that the only way that I could add value, the only way that I could 
convince these people to like me and want to hang out with me is by offering them that. So was it really a choice that I was making? Was that choice liberating me? No. I know there's still a lot of back and forth on what is considered empowering and what isn't. And obviously a lot of it is up to the individual. I mean, I can't tell you how to feel. This is just how I feel. But at the time, back then, I would have told you that I felt super empowered and super liberated and I was just embracing my sexuality and living in it. And I thought it was my choice, but it was actually a choice that I was primed to make by living in a patriarchal society. You know? I think post-college, I started seeing things a little differently. I started becoming more in tune with my own body, with my own wants and desires and boundaries. And ultimately, it made me realize that I don't like casual sex. And I've never liked casual sex. <laughs> it doesn't make me feel good. And I was leaving these dynamics feeling totally and completely drained. Now, it wasn't always that way. I've had one or two casual dynamics that I did feel like worked for me emotionally and I was comfortable with them at the time. But the reason why I think that most of my experiences were not like that and did not make me feel that way is because the way that hookup culture treats casual sex, it makes young people believe that casual sex is easier than other kinds of sex. It's effortless, there's a lack of investment, and ultimately, just not that deep. You don't care that much about each other, no big deal. It's casual. And if you do start to care about the person that you're with intimately that's supposed to be casual, you are seen as a burden, you're too much, you're weird. And that was the disconnect that always made me feel so awful because I would always care about every person that I've ever been intimate with. It doesn't mean that I wanted to be with them, but I gave a shit about them. And I expected them to give a shit about me too. And this is the lie that I think is being told to a lot of young young people in that casual sex is easier and effortless and doesn't have as much of an investment as other kinds of sex. And I think that's bullshit. Casual sex is not easier than other kinds of sex. There is not a lack of investment. There's a lack of commitment. You are not committed to this person. You're not in a relationship with this person, but you should absolutely give a fuck about them, care about their well-being, prioritize communication. If you can't do that, if you can't see the person that you're having casual sex with as a real, fully formed human being that you respect and give a shit about without being like, oh, it's not too serious. Uh, I don't want to catch feelings. I'm not a simp. If you can't do that, you shouldn't be having casual sex and it's dangerous. I think that in certain dynamics, casual sex can work, but do you know why it works? It works because those two people are mature, communicative, and give a shit about each other. If your idea of casual sex is pretending that you don't give a fuck about that other person and treating them like they're dirt on the bottom of your shoe in hopes that they don't catch feelings for you, that's not casual sex, you're just a fucking asshole. Like, I don't know how else to put this. <laughs> and that's why I say that I think we've become too casual about casual sex. This idea that it's like cringe to care about each other, to take care of the people that you're intimate with, to be gentle, to offer softness to each other, like that's fucked to me. And the fact that this is the kind of hookup culture, the kind of sex that young people are growing up being thrown into, that makes me like fucking infuriating. I believe that having good and healthy casual sex requires a deep investment from both people. And when I look back now, this feels like a major part of why I have had a, such a hard time processing and healing from a lot of the experiences I had during that phase of my life. I was very rarely in casual dynamics that even had a shot of working out and being healthy because I was learning that being casual meant not caring and that's not something that I can do and that's also not something I want my partners to be able to do with me. You can be non-committed and also give a fuck about each other and I hate that caring and giving a shit about each other and holding space emotionally for people before, during, and after sex is seen as like, oh, whoa, that's too much of an investment. You want too much. And it's like, that's the bare minimum. If you can't fucking do that, you shouldn't be having sex. And I think safe 
sex very much connects to all of this in the sense that if you are learning about casual sex, engaging with it for the first time, and you're learning that part of casual sex is like not giving a shit and being cool girl all the time and never having any sort of care for your partners and they're not giving you that care either, it must be really hard to have serious intimate conversations about condoms about birth control about std tests i can't tell you the amount of frustrating conversations i had during that phase of my life about birth control condoms stds whatever the amount of people that acted like i was a major inconvenience to them for asking them to put on a condom for asking them to get tested i was killing the mood i'm taking things too serious i just do it on a whim i don't need to use a condom it's just once shut the fuck up. You start believing that you can't even bring up those types of conversations because you are killing the mood. It's too serious. Sex becomes a big to do, but in order to stick with the casual dynamic, you have to be impulsive and do shit on a whim and not even think about it. You're living your crazy college fantasy, baby. You're in your whole phase. So looking back at my college experiences, it's not necessarily that I have regret. I don't know that regret is the word that I would use to characterize how I feel about that phase of my life, but I have a lot of criticisms on the attitudes around casual sex at that time. I think that everybody should have all of the sex they want and none of the sex that they don't. Masturbate, experiment, and Indulge in your pleasure as often as you'd like. There's no shame in that. I think that casual sex really works for some people. I have now learned that I am not one of those people. And I do feel a frustration in how sex was taught to me in those formative years. I feel like I was made to believe that I was being given the power to choose whether or not I wanted to engage in hypersexuality when really that was never a choice. This was just misogyny repackaged in like a Tumblr feminist rapping is all it was. Now I'm not celibate necessarily. I still fuck every now and then. <laughs> but I don't have sex often. Most of my sexual experiences are between me and Miss Vibrator. Miss 12 different vibrators in my bedside table. Absolutely, yes I do. So I don't have sex often at this point in time in my life. And when I do have sex, it's with someone that I am actively dating and pursuing. We might not be in a committed relationship, but it's not casual. I love sex. I love talking about sex. I love making videos about sex. I love celebrating sex, but you know what I love even fucking more? Making sure the sex that I am having makes me feel safe and comfortable. Sex with boundaries and conditions. Sex that I actually want to be having. Not just sex that I think I should want to be having. That's my own story. That's my own perspective on going through a hoe phase, what I learned from it, and how it has resulted in me being very much the opposite in my adult life. I hope, if anything, this video just encouraged you to check in with your own boundaries and ask yourself how your current relationships make you feel. Intimacy should feel safe and fun. And if it doesn't feel that way, please don't brush it off and treat yourself like you are asking for too much for wanting care and a casual dynamic. That is not true. You are asking for the bare minimum. The only way that casual sex works is when we are human with each other. So anyways, that's the story of my journey on the whole phase of celibacy pipeline. Again, shout out to Beducated for sponsoring today's video. The sex ed you always wanted and never got. I seriously cannot recommend them enough. And what a fitting sponsor for this kind of video. Be sure to check out my podcast, Emotionally Online, if you haven't already. I'm going to be taking a break at the end of this year. So if you're missing me, go watch the podcast. I'm also taking a break from the podcast, but there's a lot of episodes over there that if you haven't watched them, you'll have a lot of content to catch up on. And last but not least, you can follow me on Instagram at Maddie Drospeck. I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.